In this Just Campus how-to video, we're going to have a look at your front headlamp assembly on all late model Volkswagens. And uh, this information is applicable from 68 on, so as long as you've got upright headlamps, this is the video for you. Well, we'll have a quick look at the uh, products that are available, and uh, we'll go through and then have a look at the vehicle itself. In here we have a brand new genuine, as in Heller supplied to Volkswagen originally, complete earlier style headlamp and here we have the slightly later model 72 on usually and that's a seal beam unit. Just here we have available from Just Campers the little three-way pin block and also a little bit of wire. Now this will become uh, obvious once we get inside the headlamp just in case somebody's been in there bodging for you and we also have a standard bulb inside this box and uh, the much preferred halogen uprated bulb here, the H4 conversion bulb, and then a selection of screwdrivers. We've got a very small screwdriver here which we can use for prying out the wires that we've already seen here, a Phillips screwdriver for removing the headlamp itself, and then finally it might be useful to have a large flat bladed screwdriver just for a bit of prizing. You might also want a bit of uh, paper toweling or a bit of rag just to protect your paintwork if you have to prize your headlamp off. Okay, so we'll take a look at the headlamp assembly itself. You've got the rim on the outside and a headlamp assembly on the inside. Now this happens to be a later Beetle here, and all late campers will be the same, but just to show you, this is the earlier style one, and this unit is complete, and it is all held in with the rim itself, with the retaining screw at the bottom, um, but you may well have the H4 style assembly. In this case everything's contained in this unit and then the outside headlamp rim just covers it up and makes it look nice. One thing to bear in mind at the moment is that we're looking at European spec or particularly UK spec headlamps. Now if you have an American vehicle you will find that the H4 style uh, bulb assembly that we've got here might well be a sealed beam unit. Now if you have bought an American import one, it is this H4 conversion unit that you need to buy. But don't worry, all the fixings are exactly the same no matter what market it was for. Well no matter what year you have, you're going to need to remove the retaining screw. If it's a late model one with the H4 lamp assembly, you will need to just take off the rim and uh, Oh dear, <laughs> interestingly wood screw used here, this could show problems to come. Now normally these rims will come straight off, little wiggle, you can see the headlamp assembly is loose there, it looks like a screw's missing. Mind out there's a little lug on the top, you can see it's stuck on there, be careful especially if you've got nice paint. Um, you can see a little clip on the top there which rests into the wing or the body of your bay window and then we can actually remove the retaining screws. There should be three, one here, one here and one down the bottom but it looks to me like yeah we've definitely got one missing here and yet more wood screws. So it's just a case of removing those three and you probably see I'm keeping my left hand against the lens there we don't want the thing dropping out particularly if all you're intending on doing is swapping your bulbs now I can pull this out and show you that this is actually an MOT failure anyway. There's an awful lot of rust on that reflector unit down there. And as you can probably see now from what we've already shown you, this is the later style H4. And if we flip it over, you should have a little electrical multi-connector here. And the wires go down through it. Now without that part, these could actually touch together short and burn out your wiring loom. So we've got the, uh, the other piece. And what we have here is a replacement one with a little bit of wiring loom on it. Now some body shops, if they're changing a wing or whatever, will just literally chop through here. So you can use that or you can use a little screwdriver and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. And we'll just be using this plastic block itself. Well I'm going to mark the position of each of the three main wires on here. It goes without saying you want to make sure your headlamp switched off and possibly uh, disconnect the battery. Um, so we'll just go in there and I just literally put a, a Y for yellow, a B for brown and a W from the white 
And uh, interestingly, that colour scheme has been used right from the very, very early days of Volkswagens. So making sure that you're not going to be getting any sparks, we can then just gently prise these off. And then, once <laughs> slightly rusted into position. Now to remove the bulb retaining system here, it's a gentle push down and then a swivel and it will just literally lift out. And you can usually just pull the bulb out. There we go. And now we can see a bog standard bulb in there that is actually broken. So you can probably hear that tinkling away. The final thing to do, a little twist and a gentle pull to remove a side light bulb holder. Now fortunately the actual wiring loom here and the connectors are all in very good condition but if yours are frayed, tatty, being chewed around or whatever then you might actually want to consider fitting some uh, connectors onto here and replacing the ends of the wiring loom but as I mentioned earlier we're good to go and it's just this block that I'm looking for. Somebody's taken it off and not used it in the past. Now the way these little spade connectors are held in is with this tiny little spade if you like on the back this little lug here and what we want to do to release them because we have to do that with the new ones is use a very thin screwdriver push down just push them down so that that goes flat and then we can withdraw it and then once we've put them into the new one put the screwdriver down from the other end and just lift it out a little and that will make sure that the spade connectors stay within the multi-block. So we'll get on and do that, and you can join us again in a moment. Welcome back. I'm just pushing the last one in. These can be a bit of a fiddle, so take your time. And once you've got them back in, don't forget with the small screwdriver, just to make sure that those little tags are in. And be careful, you can see I've actually uh, broken a little bit away here. It's not going to be a problem, but uh, take it nice and steady when you're taking the old ones out. Right, that's just about ready now. We have three different types of bulbs here, and we've basically got a couple of different types of headlamps, as we've seen. We've got that style there, and uh, the earlier sort of um, 68 up to 73 there and thereabouts style. Now you can see this area is quite flat and round and correspondingly the original bulbs have the rounded edge on here. Now the halogen bulb upgrades you can get, they're sometimes called H4 conversion bulbs, still have that rounded area around there but obviously we have the halogen bulb and please note I am not touching the lens if you have to touch it this end make sure it's on the covered portion any oils from your finger going on there and that can just be normal human oil rather than engine oil finally we have this type here with the three spade attachments because these actually slot down and fit into that area there the other style of bulbs unfortunately will not fit down so make sure you get the right bulb for the right headlamp Okay, time to drop the bulb in. If you actually have a look at those lugs, they're almost like the CND sign, the three points. So you need to line it up and drop it in. And then this spring clip simply pushes down and then you squeeze the springs together and put them into the little locating area. It's very straightforward. Now, one good thing about having one of these brand new ones is you also get one of these rubber things here. Again, very straightforward. Just push it on and that'll keep any moisture out from the bulb and make sure that it lasts a very long time. Well make sure you push the centre portion of that rubber down if you're using this style all the way and then it's simply a case of reconnecting the multi-block. You may find it useful just to put your fingers across the end of the wires and just push it down. So it's nice and straightforward. And then the one last thing which I don't think you're going to be able to see particularly easily is putting back the side light into there and again it's a case of lining up the lugs pushing it in and giving it a twist well there was me saying a simple push and twist and uh, the side light bulb holder would be in position but of course we've gone for the uh, slightly different version the later one so i uh, had to order up a separate side light bulb holder which fingers crossed there we go so you just slot it in 
and then give it a twist. And that's how they go. Uh, very simple to swap over, very cheap as well. Just pull the two wires off and you're off and away. At this point, I like to double check to make sure that all of the bulbs are working correctly. So um, if you've got an early style, you'll just need to push the whole assembly in. You might just be able to hang it there. Um, with this later style, I'm just going to use one of the retaining screws and uh, hold it in position and then go through the bulbs. So need to check out exactly why the side light bulb's not working, everything else A-OK. -okay. And this is the main reason why I don't actually fit everything up until I've double checked everything. And uh, do you know what? I've already remembered exactly what it was. I put the new bulb holder in, but forgot to transfer the side light bulb. Okay, we're going to look at adjusting your headlamps now. Um, you can either do this down at your local friendly MOT station. Uh, a lot of places will enable you to uh, just set them up free of charge. Um, in this instance, I'm using my trousers. You could use the back wall on your garage or maybe a, a piece of cardboard. Um, and we have two adjusting screws and it's simply a case of adjusting them. The bottom one goes in to bring that beam pattern down, out to bring it up. And we can do the same at the top. And by using a combination of the two, you can actually adjust where that beam is falling in relation to the vehicle, so slightly to the left or to the right. Now, if you're unsure about this, just do a rough adjustment, then let your MOT man do it. The main point to bear in mind is that on dip beam, you don't want your offside headlamp pointing up, otherwise you're going to dazzle other drivers. Well, the process is exactly the same on the earlier upright headlamps. You still have the two adjustable points here for adjusting the headlamp aim, but they are in fact accessible through the outer rim. You don't even need to have the headlamp taken off. Well, one thing to point out, I mentioned the nasty wood screws at the start of this job. Um, that is what a correct uh, rim retaining screw should look like. And the trouble is, once somebody's used one of these, it will actually open up the hole um, so you're stuck with using them forever. In summary then, a very straightforward job, hardly any tools required at all. Um, it's always a good idea to periodically check your headlamps, uh, maybe when following another car or if you happen to go into a garage you can use their front glass. Um, always worthwhile upgrading from a standard headlamp up to the H4. The only thing to watch out for is just to see which bulb holder assembly you've got in there and order the correct bulbs from JK appropriately. Mm -hmm.